So, boys, uh, quick question. I have been struggling recently. I have a very addictive personality when it comes to camera stuff. And uh, I always, like, immediately after buying a new camera, I'm like, I'm back on the internet looking for, like, the next newest camera. Like, I got the the Canon R5C several months ago, and I I justified it because it's a really nice photo camera and uh, shoots 8K raw video. Um, it's you know fairly pricey. It was like, oh, you know, I've got a I've got a new daughter. It'll be great for a future proof <laughs> video and you know family yeah. photos, and yeah. I can use it for work too. And now, now immediately I'm like, okay, what's even better than this? I need something new. Do you boys have anything like that? Am I am I just an awful consumerist pig, or <laughs> or am I am I not alone in this? That, I mean, for someone whose like entire uh, career is uh, uh, talking shit about capitalism, I'm talking about myself here. Uh, I absolutely suffer from the same disease, but not when it comes to everything. For example, phones and shit. I don't give a fuck if I have mm. something that's ten years old. My computer, as long as it runs, I'm fine, and all, so on. But like with uh, stuff that's relatively defined that's even more cringier like as a status symbol or something uh, even though I understand the absolute irrationality and quite literally uh, falsely created idea that uh, you owning the newest version of that means that you uh, you know are doing well in life but if it mm. you know gets outdated it's fucking with you for example when it comes to cars even though I, I drive like an old beater or whatever the, I think the second I actually purchase my my first you know like new car or whatever with a bank loan or or if patreon's good with cash god bless god bless obviously it's gonna be a pimped out uh, white bmw that smells like perfume inside but no all, yeah. i forgot that's my persian identity now i'm going back to uh being a balkan guy so it's not gonna smell like perfume it's gonna smell like cigarette smoke but uh no i i know myself because you know every like three four years when they completely change the design of the model and if I'm sitting in that thing and I'm driving it down the highway and I see someone with the, with the newer model, it will every single time I do that, I see them, it will remind me that like I'm settling for less. Even though, <laughs> yeah. again, this is like I, ideology. This is like plugged in my brain by advertising. And our, our guest, I think, can agree as, as a fellow corporate advertising sellout <laughs> uh, in a good way, though. Uh, but it, it's, it's so ingrained at this point that it, uh, you know, it's, it's a complex. It, it, it just digs at me from within. So, yeah. Yeah, none of us are safe. Mm-hmm. Just depends on uh, what you you're obsessed about. That and number two, whenever I do have the budget, my brain immediately goes like uh, the most expensive thing I can afford yeah. is the one that I'm yeah. going to get. <laughs> I absolutely do like I do not buy budget stuff. I, dude, it's so fucked up. Sometimes there's discounts, bro. There's literal discounts and shit. Uh, you know, you walk in a store and you have the new season stuff and then you have the discounted stuff, right? I'm talking fashion here, for example. I feel like like I am I, I, I'm like a lesser human being <laughs> when I go to the discount section. I mean, absolutely <laughs> internalized. I completely internalize it and I admit to it. But, uh, you know, at least understanding your disease is half of the, half yeah. of the answer, I guess. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I enjoy my, my fair share of consumer goods. I feel like I don't really have that, like, prestige attached or that like nice. uh you know it's it's i'm very utilitarian so i feel like Good. the biggest thing i've splurged on recently probably is like our big ass tv we have like a yeah i don't know it's almost 80 inch it's just like takes up like the Whoa. whole living it's like 70 something nice. yeah i'm like you know what i want to this was like at the beginning of the pandemic too i'm like you know what? i might as well oh, enjoy yeah. my my viewing experience yeah, if you're going to be trapped inside for, you know, we didn't know it at the time, but three years. Yeah, as well. yeah, yeah. My partner was, like, concerned. Like, is this too big? I'm like, no, no, this is great. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I used to work at Best Buy, and, um, like, we didn't have a TV or anything when I when – my wife and I got married like right out of school. So we moved into a tiny little apartment. We didn't have a TV. Um, but then like I was talking to the home theater guys and like, yeah, we get discounts on like projectors and, and screens and stuff because we had a home theater department or um, what do they call it? The Magnolia home theater department. So the fancy ones that aren't in every store. And I was like, yeah, please give me that discount. And so they hooked <laughs> me up with a sweet discount. And now I've got uh, I've had for 
I don't know how, how long have we been married? Eight, like eight years now. A yes. 120 inch screen and a 4K projector. Suck oh, my <laughs> dick, man. <laughs> Fuck you. It's, I'm, the, I'm over here planning on buying a fucking 60 inch TV in like uh, next month and shit. But not like, uh, uh, see, the issue is working. This motherfucker has an 85 inch one, and then you came in with a 120 inch one. Like, Jesus Christ. Oedipus complex up in here, but for TVs, man. Yeah. Lord. Yeah. Well, it's it was so nice because I got the whole setup for less than what I would have paid for a nice TV because of the, the ridiculous markups that you, you see at Best Buy. And it was like, I, I paid, I think, 700 bucks for the screen. And it's like a top of the line screen. Uh, and it, it retails for like $4,000. I'm like, wow, that they're marking it up that much. It's wild yeah. when you see yeah. behind the scenes. I can barely shop at Best Buy anymore because I know I'm getting fleeced. Oh, absolutely. Everything's so marked up, man. Like the, the, And they always explain it away as, you know, our markup is because of yeah. labor cost. Yeah. Our markup is because, you know, you know how expensive the rent is for this place. Oh, yeah. You know, electricity, water. And then I, my favorite, the marketing budget. Dude, you know how big a marketing budget is? But then, you know, fucking the people in the marketing department aren't even getting paid that much. Yeah. And like at, th- at this point, it's not even that like uh, expensive to even run ads. Okay, on TV and primetime, Etc. Cetera, et cetera, is still expensive, but like like digital ads and shit, you, we can have a whole debate on whether they at this point work or not. Mm. But but it's it doesn't cost that much, especially for conglomerates as massive as this. So anything but like a 10 20 percent markup is is already them you know fucking you quite literally. yeah and not in a good way. Yeah, like I've been looking at um like the cameras are they're not that much in parts like the R&D obviously a lot of money goes into it for the, especially the higher end cameras and stuff so i've been looking at um i, I but come on it takes it takes a photo and it takes a video okay now i'm being a <laughs> but no, but how hd can it get like come on my love so, do you okay. really want your your beautiful daughter's like every single All the pore pores, yeah. to be visible <laughs> one day when she if looks back at herself if it's not H- 8k i don't want it okay exactly that's the thing i mean i was through i'm like looking back on college i was so i was ecstatic when we got the first you know full hd uh dslr like my first camera that I, that i shot stuff with my first documentaries was a canon 6d um and like it's a basically a potato now looking back at it but like you get real caught up in all the specs and stuff. I'm I'm here comparing like five cameras. I'm like, okay, so I need internal ND filters. I need uh, I'd like internal RAW. I'd like it to be recorded to uh, CFast card or CF Express cards. Uh, I would love full sized XLR ports and stuff like that. And I'm comparing all these cameras, and none of them have all of those things. Like they they purposefully hamstring their products so that I can't just buy one camera and you know deep down I'm like yes I can buy multiple cameras but that's annoying yeah I need to I need to learn more about like cameras because I mean just hearing you talk I'm like oh man I I've been filming everything on my like iPhone 11 so I need to step it up (laughs) well they're good now like the the cameras and phones are like they're really solid they are pretty Um, solid yeah yeah and I mean so the market share on on proper big cameras has just drastically reduced. I mean, there's obviously still a place for them, but for yeah. most things, like, I mean, if you light your stuff well, you could shoot whatever you want. Like, you could shoot a fairly high quality YouTube video on a phone, and very few people would be able to pick it out. But, like, going down the camera rabbit hole, good lord, it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> but you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna break the bank. Yeah, my dad used uh, to always, like, carry his camcorder around, like, his, like, old school camcorder yeah, yeah, and it eventually yeah. got to the point where like the like, quality classic on that dad. yeah classic dad move and <laughs> <laughs> and it got to the point i'm like you know your iphone's like just gonna be a lot better quality yeah, <laughs> yeah. i remember in like a uh, very nice like uh, shout out to them i obviously can't say the exact name but uh like we a club where we just literally did sketches that's mm-hmm. it we recorded sketches then we had a show at the end of the year where we would show the sketches and it was a little like a ceremony where people got like uh, reverse uh, honors you know like you know the biggest pothead or the biggest oh, yeah, yeah. on <laughs> yeah. campus the biggest da-da-da, Class but with the sketches and i remember uh, yeah it was very cool very original but uh learned a lot 
but um, the, the funniest part was, you know, we got a budget finally from the university, and we spent it on, I think it was a Sony Black Magic or something. Okay, that's two different just brands. Two different brands. Saying that. <laughs> no, really, is it? Oh, yeah. I remember it was Black Magic, and uh, and us recording like this, like fifteen minute sketch, right? Uh, and then sitting down to edit it, and it was absolutely fucking too complicated to edit. We <laughs> yeah. need to do color correcting yeah, and shit. Yeah. Da, da, da. And we went back and we reshot the whole thing with an iPhone <laughs> and edited it in like two days, and it was absolutely fucking fine. It would take us less time than to you know shoot it with this epic camera and then and then uh, fix it afterwards. But you know the the the, the tool is as good as the hands. That yeah. build it, blah blah blah. Boomer talk. But uh, uh, it's nice to have a passion about. Oh, Oh, yeah, something. I mean, and, and you're, you're with absolutely gadgets. Right. It's useful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're, but you're right though. Like, wh- I went and shot um, that my the video I did about Walmart um, and like central planning and stuff like that. And my my creative director was like, "All right, so we've got the camera rigged up and stuff. We're gonna take this into Walmart." I'm like, "Man, that's a lot of effort. Let's just leave that in the car and bring the phone." And we shot the whole interior of the Walmart on the phone, and nobody knew. So <laughs> I'm fully aware that my my addiction. Uh, the return on investment is not as not as high as it could be, but it's it's fun. I'll never give up my sweet cameras. And let's start the show before I tell people how much I've spent on cameras in the last five well, years. All the patrons start leaving. Like, yeah. Why are you giving this guy money? Motherfucker, drop 10k on a camera, bro. <laughs> Well, howdy, y'all, and welcome to another episode of The Deprogram. Today we have with us the one and only James Rewald, TikTok propagandist extraordinaire. You may know him from such bangers as How U.S. Corporate Media and State Propaganda Advance Ruling Class Interests at Home and Abroad. It's <laughs> <laughs> a long title. Uh, join the CIA today. And the recent I Toured a Defense Contractor's Home. And for those of you who haven't seen that last one, I strongly encourage you to God. look it up on YouTube or TikTok and give it a watch. It's got Real a cinema. It's a ridiculous amount of information packed into a minute and a half. Like every time I watch one of <laughs> James's videos, I'm like, man, he just did in 90 seconds what it takes me 20 minutes to do. So anyway, James, for those who aren't familiar with your work, can you tell us a little about who you are and what you do? Yes. Well, thank you for the uh, great <laughs> intro. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I, <laughs> I make TikToks, I post videos. Um, I guess just to kind of rewind back, I originally was just, you know, the usual like new TikTok user when the pandemic kicked off and I was like, mm. fuck, I'm stuck at home. Might as well just like download TikTok. Um, and originally I was just, you know, using it as any other user. And I think I had like a couple friends that are like posting some kind of funny skits and stuff. I'm like, oh, this kind of reminds me of like the OG YouTube days. So mm. I thought it'd be funny to just like make my own skits just to like make my friends laugh. And then I think it was like my third or fourth video went super viral. And I was like, oh, okay, there's some like public appeal here. Mm. And of course, naturally, as uh, you know, things went to shit during the pandemic and, uh, you know, just the craziness of 2020 and beyond, I, I think I, <laughs> that radicalized me uh, for the better. Yeah. And I think that I kind of reflected that in my videos and, you know, at the same time, just trying to challenge myself and learn as much as I can about like video production and also just the, the content itself. Yeah, I guess that brings me here today. And I, <laughs> I feel like now I'm just like making these tiny short films. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's been it's been fun. Yeah, well, I think I feel like everybody picked up some new skill in COVID, whether it's making uh, TikTok propaganda or or making uh, sourdough bread. But um, (laughs) so, okay, All right. I'm a level with all with all of y'all here. Uh, Cards on the table. I don't understand what TikTok. I I don't get it. (laughs) It causes you, Gopnik, no end of suffering. Um, So I'm uh, shaking right now. You got sends us TikToks all the time. And, uh, and I'm like, how'd you find this? This is, this is kind of funny. <laughs> where, where do these live? Um, my only experience <laughs> with TikTok, they're like posted on, on, uh, on Twitter. I'm a boomer. So for all the old and decrepit listeners, can you just briefly tell us why young people are so into TikTok? I know it kind of started as like, uh, dancing videos and stuff. And I know that's still there, but what's the main appeal these days? What makes it better or, or at least different than something like YouTube? No, that's a that's a great question. Yeah, it's funny because I, I kind of think back in retrospect, like I, I was definitely a TikTok hater. Like before I had mm-hmm. TikTok, I was like, because I get the ads all the time on like, you know, like pre-rolls on YouTube and 
and whatnot. And I was like, God, this is just like, you know, dancing videos and whatnot. It's just very mm-hmm. cringe. And I mean, like, you know, people can do that if they want. It's not my speed. But um, eventually I started to learn like why there's so much appeal behind it. I feel like, you know, it's it's very diverse. Like there's lots of different types of content. Like I, I don't realize that until I look at somebody else's TikTok on their phone. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, shit, this is just like completely different than my feed. But I think I guess it's kind of like two sort of reasons. Like one, it's super streamlined, right? Like mm-hmm. you can literally just swipe with your thumb on, on the UI. It's just super easy. Also, like, you know, <laughs> our attention spans are shortening and I feel like it fills that need. <laughs> Um, yeah. but also there's like real reason that, you know, people might want to access information very quickly. I think we can all kind of relate to that annoying mm-hmm. sort of like trying to find a YouTube video and then like you have to go to like the three minute mark to get like the meat of the content or yeah. whatever. So I, I, you know, it, it gives us that endorsement endorphin release uh, pretty quick or that info that we need. But, you know, I don't, I don't think it can really replace YouTube in that respect, but it definitely has like something going on and. The data scientists are doing something unique there. Like the algorithm is just like really tailored and people get content that's really tailored to their interests. Um, and then I guess the second reason would be sort of like the allure of going viral. Like it, it was always, it, they almost like democratize it in a sense, but like mm. feel like it's a little harder. It takes more work to like build up a following and go viral, so to speak, on like, you know, YouTube or Twitter or, or um Facebook or whatever, but like TikTok, they almost kind of give you a chance. Like, oh, if you make a solid piece of content, like you might go viral. Um, mm. Although I've read reports that they might also like try to like <laughs> give you a better chance if you're a new user to kind of like hook you in early. Oh, interesting. Yeah, huh. yeah. But you know, I think all in all, there is something unique about TikTok that I enjoy, and like it's it's <laughs> I find like lots of great music. I find like cool tutorials, um, just like funny skits and satire and comedy. So there, there's something going on there. So I feel like people are, are feel like they're able to get what they want and they also have a better chance of uh, having reach. Yeah, it's it's really interesting to me to watch because the YouTube algorithm, I feel like, is just so bad. Like <laughs> if I'm over here and I, I'm, I don't watch conservative stuff like I don't want I will not even hate watch Ben Shapiro Jordan Peterson any of those people and yet if I watch anything remotely political my feed will then just be flooded with all of that stuff and maybe it's just because there's so much of it and it's just you know it's got those tags and yeah of course I'm glad it's not just me because that same thing happens to me yeah and it's it's wild like I'm I keep going okay I don't like this video please don't show me show it to me again but you know it just auto populates with all the fan versions of those uploads and stuff so which is a very (laughs) frustrating but uh but yeah, I've heard the TikTok algorithm is, is actually very good. And it's fascinating to me that YouTube, with all its money and power, can't replicate that at least to an extent. And, you know, maybe that's maybe that's intentional that they're pushing certain content over others. But, you know, I don't want to get too far into, yeah, yeah. into the conspiratorial. No it's, <laughs> no, it's super interesting. I'm like, like, why am I getting a Prager U video? Like, what did I click? <laughs> yeah, that? Like Always. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, the, the, just the algorithm fucking uh, makes it God tier. That's number one. Number two, uh, it feels a lot more, uh, you know, like uh, your everyday uh, dude uh, or uh, whoever made the actual TikTok. Because to me, a lot of people compare it to YouTube, and I think they're different animals, and they can very much yeah. so complement each other. But, like, I am so fucking happy. Happy, look at me, a communist here happy about one corporation <laughs> defeating another corporation, but so fucking happy it's eating away at fucking Instagram because the Instagram is like just a pile of uh, arguably everything that's wrong about uh, the, you know, average human culture uh, under under uh, the the market capitalism. And, uh, you know, that, that whole approach of Instagram was show um, who you want people to think you are well tiktok genuinely doesn't it the platform itself doesn't encourage it but i guess because of just the 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 culture that arose during the early days on tiktok and now developed and defines you know what tiktok is supposed to be kind of really not pushes but really encourages people to just fucking be themselves people to be vulnerable people to Mm. to be as raw as possible right uh i would i would even go to to such an extent that like i genuinely think that for example something that's over edited over perfected yeah. 
too fucking clean. It doesn't work on TikTok because people, it yeah. feels like a fucking, no matter if, if, you know, it has a good message and if it's even art, et cetera, et cetera, it just, it feels like um, an organization is giving yeah. it to you. Yeah. On TikTok, you want to feel like you're connected to the other person from across the screen that took uh, between one hour to 50 hours uh, to make, or 500, you know, to make this particular particular experience for you. And that, that that's why it's, uh, it's different. Yeah, no, and again, it, the fucking algorithm, like Jesus. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I mean, it goes. It really just goes against the grain of like the polished image of Instagram. Mm-hmm. Like people, people can post like embarrassing videos on themselves um, or something funny like that to TikTok more easily. And that joke, you know, uh, if you want to see, obviously this is going to be a topic of conversation for the later part of the the episode, but uh, I don't know who said it. Uh, uh, search Paris uh, on Instagram and search Paris on TikTok. On Instagram, it's, you know, people having picnics and yeah. <laughs> croissants. And on TikTok, it's fucking uh, urban warfare. <laughs> up in this that too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I actually, yeah, that just reminds me of like in 2020, I'd see like all sorts of very like, raw footage from you know protests and actions and riots and whatnot and like i'd see stuff on tiktok that i wouldn't see anywhere else except maybe like twitter but like half the time it's like reposts from tiktok so Mm. yeah it's definitely a lot more just raw and this is something we'll probably get into later but i saw um on on twitter uh the other day that someone had posted a, a a really like a well done radical um, explainer a TikTok from uh, some girl I can't remember her name, um, but she was doing a, a great breakdown of BlackRock and stuff like that. Mm. And the guy said like this is why they actually want to ban TikTok and platforms like it because it just it really democratizes access to uh, information like this in a format that doesn't take much. There's not a huge barrier to entry. Like you can just be in front of your phone throw up a Wikipedia article, talk about it, and people will watch it and be engaged with it. And that's it goes a really long way towards spreading this information um, to people who otherwise likely wouldn't see it. So it's really cool. But we'll get to that in a little bit. But um, continuing on here, what prompted you to start a TikTok and what has that trajectory looked like? Was it always the super elaborate lefty propaganda or did that come later? Yeah, let's see. I mean, I... I made it at first as a user and I started making content. Like I've always been a fan of like, you know, satirical comedy. I was kind of mm-hmm. your typical, like, uh, I guess like younger as like a liberal sort of comedy central daily show watcher. And I, I, mean, I still love a lot of those guys. Um, so I feel like I kind of channeled that into my own sort of mm-hmm. uh, method. But, you know, eventually as I'd start to see like, <laughs> other people's content that I either agreed with or maybe I disagreed with and that kind of motivated me to be like, okay, this is fucking stupid. I need to like mm-hmm. do a video about this before other people watch all this fuckery. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it wasn't ever really a plan from the beginning. It kind of just like developed over time. Um, I think as I, I've just been very curious to learn more just about how the world works and um, you know, I, I, I guess like politically like, uh, you know, I, I, grew up in a pretty conservative household. Mm-hmm. Um, and I probably like, as I got older, identified as like liberal or progressive and, you know, that <laughs> later swung more left, uh, as like Trump got elected in those years and especially through the p- pandemic and beyond. Um, so I think it's been just a lot of like reflecting how I've changed in my own political development. So yeah, it's been sort of a progressive journey. Yeah. That maps pretty closely to, to my experience as well. Like I was doing, YouTube stuff for for several years before I made the switch to explicitly socialist content and but yeah. Yeah, same thing where it's like yeah I don't really consider myself political you know this Trump guy he's kind of he seems like a, a shitty person very loud crass uh, ignorant racist all that stuff and then uh, Bernie's rhetoric I was like oh cool social democracy what's that oh it's it's different from socialism okay what's socialism and then you know <laughs> suddenly state and revolution I'm like oh, okay all right now I'm a socialist <laughs> this is this slaps. Um, <laughs> But yeah, um, and all side note, um, talking about like the early origins of channels and stuff, I, I was having a scroll through your YouTube and I saw like the 15 year old videos of testing, like, uh, oh my god, like, you saw that gunshot effects, <laughs> yeah, because I did the same thing when I was younger. I was like, I'd find the the, the <laughs> little muzzle flashes with the alpha channel that you key out and you put it over the, the airsoft gun. Oh yeah. man, yeah, so that... I, I see, I see you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's it's so funny. I'm like people are surprised. Like, how do you still have your YouTube channel from when you're like 14? I'm yeah. like, I don't know, man. I just I 
never forgot my <laughs> password. <laughs> but... I lost mine years ago. Like I had how to solve a Rubik's cube. I had like butterfly knife tutorials. Wow, like, wow that's <laughs> fun. <laughs> Dang. None of that is as cringe as mine, man. I, I don't think I've ever said this, but I actually start, tried to make a Call of Duty like uh, streamer oh, yes. thing when I was 14, <laughs> oh, yeah. 15. But I didn't have money for what was that called? Uh, that box that you need to plug into a console because it was a oh, console capture player. card. Yeah, uh -huh. capture card. Oh, that was like two hundred bucks when I told that to yeah. my parents, and they were like, "For what? So you can become a what? The tuber youth? <laughs> like what the fuck is this, brother? You know, fucking slap across the room." Uh, so yeah, that that career died off. But I still tried to like I remember. Oh yeah, I would. Take other people's, oh shit, man, I was a piece of shit. You know, I would find ups. online, I would <laughs> steal other people's like uh, epic kill streaks and shit, and I would talk over it. Yes. Like, that That was <laughs> fucking mean, man. <laughs> Jesus. And, and people say socialists aren't entrepreneurial, eh? Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. But, I think my, my most viewed YouTube video is still like a Call of Duty 2, like, like Easter egg from like 15 years ago. Oh wow! I, my new videos can't even like beat it. I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how it goes. Like looking back, I can't have the the most popular videos playlist on my channel um, like at the top because it's all old stuff. It's all like, <laughs> what if NASA had the U.S. military budget? Which is you know fairly lefty compared to some of my old stuff. Yeah. Like, is time travel really possible? I'm like, man, show them the show them the economic planning <laughs> it's, stuff. Show it's like, them. They just want the retro yeah. shit, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so fair enough, whatever. Uh, anyway, so moving on a little bit. Uh, speaking of super elaborate lefty propaganda, your content is incredibly complex compared to, to most of the TikTok stuff I've seen. Um, so how do you go about shooting and editing your videos and i'm asking this as you know as a as you guys know now a giant camera and video nerd so i know some people do everything on their phones but to me that sounds like a ton of work compared to just using something like premiere or, or final cut or imovie or whatever so how what's your process looked like to produce that yeah um yeah my <laughs> my creative process i feel like so like uh, originally i would just uh jot it down in my like <laughs> notes app so, like, basically, I guess to take it from the top, like, I'd have, like, two sort of concurrent lists running. And, like, if you see my videos, like, they're very musically driven. Mm -hmm. Like, I make all the cuts mm -hmm. to, like, the progression of the, the music. So I'll have, like, a list that's, like, a bunch of songs that I think are dope. And I'm like, oh, this would be funny or this is cool or whatnot. And I just have that growing list. And then I have the other list of ideas, different, you know, whether it's tied to, like, current day events or something historical or some, like dystopian futuristic shit whatever so i'll have those two lists running and i basically try to connect the dots and once i get that down um and i have an idea um i'll basically like write shot for shot in my mm. notes app although now i'll do it on excel <laughs> so i'm getting more organized uh but yeah i'll punch it all in on excel i'll just have like each shot it's like my like version of like screenwriting i guess but like i'll have mm. it all written out and then i'll have like columns that like make it a little easier like okay i'm wearing because i'm like acting out like six eight characters and some of them like, yeah, yeah. Like, it's a little complicated uh -huh. i'm like i <laughs> i don't want to be like changing out my suit into like something else and then changing back and forth so i <laughs> still have like the the costume like you know on the side then like if i need it in the daytime or the nighttime and like all these things and then i'll sort everything in the order that's the most efficient and then i'll film in that order um and then once i have all that in uh, originally for like editing software i'd use uh this app called inshot um, mm -hmm. which is just like a free editing app I found on like the Apple store, but now I use Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, nice. and I mean, I, I, as you saw with my like 14 year old self on YouTube, I, I do have, some, I did have some Adobe <laughs> yeah. experience uh -huh. from the past. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was nice to get back into that. Um, and actually like at the very beginning of my TikTok shit, I had like, I, I used like the in app editing but it's like pretty you know it's like basic and it's a little you yeah know, you know once you start getting a bit more complicated it's, it's difficult so yeah i'll use adobe premiere now and yeah once that's all wrapped up i just post it to every platform but um okay yeah. cool so i don't have to consider you like a god among men then editing everything on your phone you can you can just be a normal premiere nerd like oh uh, no of i i did <laughs> yeah the one the the one that surprisingly i managed to do on my phone was the like cia Video. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, I like I did that all on InShot, and it adds it's free with like a watermark, so I paid like whatever like the ninety nine cents to remove it. But yeah, somehow I managed to do that all. Dang. On the yeah, I pretty much 
you download Premiere for, I mean, for everything that it comes with, but like, there's no like green ski, uh, green screen keying and like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, uh-huh. these free apps, but yep, I'm a Premiere guy. <laughs> Nice. Well, I I feel your pain because Premiere is at once incredibly useful and also the biggest pain in the ass of any yes. software I've ever used. It's a double-edged sword. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've gone one week without having some error that I have to bang my head on the keyboard to figure out why it's now giving me this rendering error when nothing has changed. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's frustrating. I'll, I'll my maybe I need to like upgrade my computer because it's just like takes forever the buffer and I'm like yeah. just up till like 3 a.m. and I'm like, all right, I think I'm done. <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah, I I upgraded my computer towards the beginning of COVID because I knew I didn't want to have to deal with all that stuff if I'm working with the higher quality footage now. And it's still, it'll go, the bar will go from, or the rendering bar will go from zero, it'll sit there for five minutes, and then suddenly it'll be at 100. So I can't even tell what the progress is. So it's faster, (laughs) but I have no idea how long it's going to take. So always, always something with Premiere. Yeah, it's painstaking. And you guys actually pay you guys actually pay for that shit like i am so fucking yeah i'm a, I'm a schmuck obviously i also know. pay for my premiere and yeah absolutely <laughs> monthly i have an annual subscription like yeah. I'm, I'm a proud user you know that cloud <laughs> thingy absolutely absolutely but no nah, when i come visit in the states i'll bring uh a couple of hard disks obviously empty hard disks with i don't know like a hundred different types of software and i'll Give it to you guys. Oh, and, uh, thank you. <laughs> should save you what, like five million dollars <laughs> per year? Because that's is, how much that. Yeah. You like supporting cost. the <laughs> Adobe company? <laughs> <laughs> They're the worst. They they've never responded to an email for customer support. Their phone yeah. chat doesn't work. Oh my god! And they they bleed you dry every month because I've got the whole creative suite and I. Like, cause I, I mean, I just, I get it to cover my ass because like all of this stuff, my second thought channel, first thought now, the deep program, that all flows through my, um, my own, like the business bank account and stuff. So I got to make sure we're all on the level so that I don't get thrown in the, in, in the, in the can. But, um, yeah, thanks. So thanks Adobe. If, if any of you are listening, uh, your product sucks. We hate you, <laughs> but, the, but, but thanks for letting us edit, I guess. All right. So. Uh, you know, half an hour into the show, I'd like to get to to the real topic for today. And that's using things like TikTok and the internet in general as a tool for education and agitation. Um, I think all of us here recognize how powerful the internet is, whether we're talking about YouTube or podcasts or political discord servers or TikTok or whatever. But to what extent do you think online agitation plays a role in building class consciousness? Because people like to say things like, oh, the internet isn't real life, but it does certainly affect real life. So how big of a role does it play? And what specifically are your goals in using these tools? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, I mean, yeah, the short answer is it definitely plays a big role. Um, I feel like, you know, people might be averse to it because like you said, it's like, oh, it's the internet and but nothing's, yeah. nothing's real there. But I mean, it's, a, it's just another communication medium, um, you know, back then, maybe organizing uh, in the 1900s, you'd <laughs> hand out leaflets in a, in a, a factory yeah. floor <laughs> or whatever. Um, and like, obviously, like that type of stuff plays a role. But I mean, when you have all these people tuned into social media and podcasts and all sorts of online media um, and just just the fact alone that it's leveraged uh, by all these like right-wing reactionaries for Mm -hmm. backwards purposes calls on us to use it for progressive and revolutionary purposes um so yeah i think it definitely plays a a crucial role in elevating people's class consciousness um and i guess my goals is to do exactly that uh but also try to you know (laughs) give it uh, apply my own flavor i think i'm very drawn to like comedy and satire and it's i i don't know i've seen a lot of like cringy humor and i'm just like ah, i kind of want to do it my own way and yeah i, I kind of like that challenge and you know it's fun um and it's it's cool to seeing like people um actually respond well to it and be like oh this is really dope i'm gonna show my students i'm like that's crazy <laughs> um mm-hmm. so like yeah like hearing stuff like that i'm like oh, okay so there's some proof of it and you know whether it's talking about like history and you know, sort of uh, applying <laughs> historical materialism and, you know, really, really just like trying to teach people things that, you know, maybe otherwise they just uh, wouldn't learn. So, yeah, I think it's, it's kind of nice having like this open world to 
you know, talk about whatever I want to. Um, yeah. And there's like so many things to talk about and there's only so many hours in a day. So I'm always trying to figure out something to, to touch on for the next video. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely plays a big role. And whether it's like YouTube, like what you guys do or, or TikTok or podcasts. Um, yeah, I think it's all, it's all very important. People shouldn't brush it away. Um, and that's not to say it's like the, uh, end all, you know, sure. like yeah, people should, do some more than that and some actual real life, uh, sort of organizing. Um, but it definitely plays like, uh, you know, sort of a, a touch point in uh, people's mm -hmm. political development. So should, should, should definitely leverage that. And additionally, like your, your incredibly like hilarious approach to, uh, you know, inputting sketches in your work are something that the left most definitely needs because, you know, we're very well known around the entire political spectrum as, you know, the left can't meme, yeah. meme yeah. Yeah. if you remember it from back in the day. Yes. But I think now through the through the years, we've uh, we've kind of proven that that might not true, fully be the case, mm -hmm. even though, and bless their heart, there are so many comrades that have... Uh, a sense of humor thinner than a piece of paper. Let's just call it that. But, you know, it's it's something that we need to work on and that we work on, especially whenever I see brilliant stuff such as such as yourself that not only informs me, not only uh, invigorates me, but also makes me fucking, uh, you know, wind down and actually laugh, properly laugh. And uh, it always, you know, that that's the beauty of, uh, you know, if comedy is obviously a... Uh, uh, in infused with ideology, just like uh, just like everything else. But the beauty of uh, of uh, left leaning comedy, if we can call it that, is it absolutely always punches up, right? Mm, yeah. And uh, your work is again brilliant in that regard as well. So so just you know being able to laugh, being able to get informed, and most importantly to be invigorated to actually uh, go out and do something all in one is I think an absolutely great uh, great package. We don't have to write seven. 75 page fucking <laughs> blog essays I know. like 1990s html pages and shit <laughs> with like uh, pictures of, of uh, angles and stalin on both like copy pasted like a hundred times Love. on the right and left side you could do a of the whole episode blog. on like marxist uh web design and just oh how yeah it <laughs> absolutely it's incredible <laughs> Yeah, I know. I, I really appreciate that. And yeah, it's, it's funny, too, because like the left camp meme stuff, I I feel I feel like my recent video, I kind of delved into that with the giant block of text, which was like, yeah, almost like <laughs> yeah. intended yeah. to be like half ironic. But I was I was like kind of this crossroads of like, should I should I just not have any of this text and just have like the titles? And I was like, ah, you know, I'll put it in. And then if people don't want to read it. They don't have to. Yeah, I thought that was a, a really cool approach with the with having that much information in the TikTok. Because on the one hand, you've got just a really entertaining video to watch, like the music slaps, the acting is very funny, all that stuff. But if someone wants to, they can pause it and right. consume a a ton of information there. Um, so I think I, I imagine like a lot of people will watch it once for to get the general impression, have some yeah. fun with it, and then go back and read the like the little citations and stuff. And that's I think that's incredibly valuable. Yeah, no, I, I feel like I'm always like at that like crossroad of like okay do i like sacrifice thor thoroughness for like brevity's sake and mm -hmm. like just keep it concise or am i gonna like risk leaving out information that people might benefit from so i'm always trying to figure that out and then just kind of like you know in front or like the insinuation that people will, will pause if they want to is always yeah. something to consider so yeah it's 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 interesting trying to figure out the best way to do it but also, like, fuck just, you know, giving information to people, which obviously the most important thing. But, like, the, the biggest, again, repetition of what I said previously, but uh, it needs to be stressed. One of the biggest, like... Uh, PR problems of the left is, you know, leftists can't have fun. They're mm. just these dry ass <laughs> right. fucking guys that ruin every fucking uh, Thanksgiving <laughs> with their fucking politics yeah. and shit. But then content like this shows, no, they're also edgy, they're cool, they're da da da. You get my fucking point. So, so it feels more relatable. It feels, it feels less cringe to call yourself, you know, uh, socialist, anarchist, whatever the fuck floats your boat, right? And that is also another aspect of, of agitation, obviously. It's not just teaching people, you know, this and that uh, idea or telling them, go read uh, this exact piece or that exact piece, but also 
demystifying the the kind of image that has been presented of the of the modern or and historical leftist by uh, by the right. Mm. And uh, yeah. it, when it works, it can, because so many people are so close to like getting class consciousness, they just don't want to go into it because. Man, again, these people, not even just leftists, but like political people, that's not really me. Like, what the fuck? You know, I'm just a little funny edgy boy. <laughs> but then they see, oh, you actually can be a funny, funny, artistic, et cetera, et cetera, edgy boy and also be be political. And in this case, uh, left wing. Yeah. So it's it's uh, it's super important. It shouldn't be like underplayed as if it's, you know, entertainment first. I mean, it is entertainment first for leftists who watch it. But for others, it is an absolutely correct, impressive, and important uh, way of generating class consciousness. So at least telling people that it's not embarrassing mm. to have it, you know? Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, and like people, you know, it's kind of just like meeting people where they're at. And if they enjoy entertainment as any other person, it's a good opportunity to, you know, use it. Yeah, and this is one of those things, like all of this is something that I feel like the left has historically, you know, the IRL left has done a really bad job of, I hate to use the word, but of capitalizing on, of, of taking advantage of, I guess, yeah. um, where, you know, the right has a monopoly on online, quote unquote, education, right. where they've got, they've got PragerU, they've got all these slick looking talk shows, the, the AM radio stuff. Um, so Daily many Wire, websites. dude. That, that shit's going to be bigger than Fox one day. Man. Exactly, yeah. They've got this whole empire and ecosystem online where if someone has a question about something, like if you search, who knows, like whatever hot button topic is, transgender, if you search the word transgender, guess what's going to come up? You're going to be funneled right down this awful uh, reactionary yeah. rabbit hole, fed more and more egregious stuff until suddenly you're a proud little Nazi recruit. Um, and that's not always the case. Some people break out of that and, you know, kudos to them for, for thinking uh, critically about this stuff. But like I, I'm a member of uh, CPUSA and I was I made a, a video for the international conference last year mm. where I'm like, guys, please, we need to build a similar online sphere to recruit people to the left to, you know, save them from the clutches of these of these <laughs> far right demagogues. If the left can't do that, if we can't offer an alternative, if we can't educate people online, if we can't agitate effectively online, then the real world effects of that will be more pronounced because we will have less opportunity and less ability to combat far right extremists in the real world. So the online world does absolutely matter, and I think we're probably all in agreement on that here. And that's why I'm 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 so appreciative of what of what you, James, and what all of us are are doing, even if we are at at core at base entertainers. Uh, it does make a difference. Like I'm sure you guys have all gotten emails saying, "Hey, you you changed my mind on this," and that's that I think is really cool. Yeah. No, you're, I, I I hope we're doing something. <laughs> yeah. 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 Fingers crossed. <laughs> um, all right. So moving on a little bit. Uh, one question that's been on everyone's mind recently is whether or not TikTok is going to be banned, or even just change in some way to comply with silly new U.S. laws. I'm sure we've all seen the clips from the congressional hearings where the, the representatives are asking questions um, and they didn't even understand how Wi-Fi works. Uh, and I call myself a boomer. So uh, in your opinion, James, is TikTok going away? <sighs> yeah, I don't know. It's 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 a tough one. I mean, it's yeah. feels reminiscent of like <laughs> like the Trump years when they try to ban it. And that's just yeah. happening again. Um, I mean, it's like it's annoying because I mean, obviously, like. Any criticisms I have against TikTok, which I do, can be levied against just social media companies in general. Yeah. Um, so I think there's like obviously valid questions that should be asked, which <laughs> but like hardly made the light of day in that congressional hearing that was just like so stupid and like mm -hmm. absurdly funny. Um, <laughs> it's the Wi-Fi network and like yeah the, <laughs> uh, but yeah I don't know I, it sounds like they're trying to sell it off uh, to U.S. buyers I mean basically it's just the government just trying to uh, you know uh, support American capitalists and they're afraid mm -hmm. of TikTok stealing their lunch um, and also just you know being able to have a monopoly in the surveillance state um, they want to be able to you know spy on their own citizens mm -hmm. and uh, TikTok is kind of a, a uh, a front to that so you know all these reasons that are happening in the background and they got a public officials dress it up as some sort of 
national security issue and they <laughs> suddenly pretend to care about data yeah. privacy and we, we know it's like <laughs> bullshit it's like okay no like the, we see what meta google reddit twitter all these companies are doing so yeah um yeah i mean i don't know i hope it i hope it doesn't go away it's it's just been such a fun platform and i and i do hope there's like improvements to the you know platform if it does contain the stay in the same way that it should be applied to other companies but yeah it's it's tough i don't know what, what do you guys think yeah i was doing some digging just a little research into it and you know for those who aren't aware we're talking about the restrict act um yeah. with all of these stupid laws it's got a cheesy name that so that it spells out restrict uh, really cringe <laughs> but what people are saying is that it's it's so broad that it doesn't it's not not necessarily targeting tiktok specifically it's, tiktok is not even mentioned in the bill um, but it's specifically about um, U.S. quote unquote foreign adversaries. So anything, any product or software that is made by um, this arbitrary list of of what Congress considers to be U.S. adversaries, so like China, Venezuela, Russia, places like that, anybody who's not bending the knee to the <laughs> United States, then that it will be that will be in the crosshairs of being purged from the United States, not being able to be hosted, things like that. Yeah, so I, I highlighted this one quote that I that I thought was correct. The EFF, which is the Electronic Frontier Foundation, it's kind of just like a watchdog group for for tech stuff. Yeah, um, they were pressing Congress to focus not on these foreign adversaries collecting our data and spying and whatnot, but instead passing quote comprehensive consumer data privacy legislation that will have a real impact and protect our data no matter what platform it's on. TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, or anywhere else that profits from our private information. Foreign adversaries won't be able to get our data from social media companies if the social media companies aren't allowed to collect, retain, and sell it in the first place. And I think that kind of gets to the heart of the issue. It's like the U.S. doesn't care when it's U.S. companies collecting, aggregating, selling um, that data. It's it's They want a monopoly on it. Uh, that's the only thing. And TikTok is not... Um, they're just pissed that it's not in their pocket. So if, if unless BlackRock wants to buy TikTok, um, it, it could be on, on the chopping block. I personally don't see it going away. Uh, I don't think TikTok will be removed. It's such a popular app yeah. um, that it would tank, you know, whoever's in office when the bill passed. But uh, that's just me. Who knows? I mean, they fumbled it so hard at this point that uh, no matter how much potential money and funds they can get uh, from American capitalists to take it down, uh, the the potential PR uh, uh, splash on them, uh, negative PR splash would be would be too intense. That's why I also don't uh, don't really uh, really see it happening. But it's it's you know everything you guys said is absolutely 100 on point and those are the most important aspects the only additional thing that i'm i, I i've noticed is that uh, you know uh, the tiktok conversation is a, uh, another step in the direction of uh, uh demonizing absolutely anything that in any way is even remotely related to uh china as a as a country so mm. we'll probably be seeing as you know uh, china is becoming more of a consumer Consumer economy instead of a production economy, etc., etc. A lot of new brands coming out of China, a lot of new apps, a lot of new—I don't know—piece clothing items, cars, etc., etc. There's going to be a very, very intense push uh, on the American side to ide- ideologize. I guess in this episode, like saying ideology all the time, Jesus mm. Christ. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, it, it, there will be a strong push to ideologize absolutely every product that uh, that comes out of china because under the uh, the capitalist structure you can't really uh, fight uh, or demonize something uh, inside of the market economy by saying it shouldn't it shouldn't be sold because then you're going against the, the way you basically set up your whole system but what you can do is you can say that uh, this particular thing can cannot should not be consumed by in this case the american market because it is linked to something which is additionally unethical immoral evil blah 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 and i just see it as as uh a, a PR tool that they're most likely going to be using in the future and that they're testing out right now on uh, um, on TikTok uh, itself. So, 
Uh, we'll see where it goes, but it, it's going to be very funny in the in the decades to come, how they you know explain away. Yeah, you, you shouldn't buy Chinese cars because they're <laughs> probably made by uh, I don't know this or that minority mm. uh, that's being eaten afterwards, and their brains are being scavenged by the <laughs> by the strange-looking Asian people. It's, it's <laughs> a fucking classic that's going yeah. to repeat itself. Yeah, but yeah, they're trying it out now, and it didn't work. But so they'll. They'll readjust and we'll see where it goes. It's like the Huawei thing all over again. It's mm, like mm-hmm. it, yeah, yeah. It's like the U.S. and its buddies would rather just have China be like a manufacturing hub, but once they start like selling its products like that, it's like oh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and with Huawei, it worked to an extent, um, but it worked because they just did it as you know direct trade war. We're removing this product. Go fuck yourself, China. Well, here they're, they're, they're because it's um, so ingrained in culture. Well, you know, respect to the manufacturers Huawei, but uh, you know, it's not a fucking iPhone. It's not like in everybody's brain, like oh my god, iPhone equals democracy, as the meme goes. You know, uh, so it was easy to push out. But TikTok, TikTok is 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 culture, literally. Like it's the main platform yeah, at this point. It's so popular. Uh, so you have to, yeah. So you have to ideologize it when you wanna push it away and then you know when you look at the hearing they try and attack from like 50 different fronts you know Mm. is it because it's connected to the evil communists is it because it's making our kids do drugs and stab each other and do i don't know planks or whatever the fuck kids do nowadays or uh uh, is it uh connected to criminal enterprises blah 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 blah. uh so so uh the second something sticks and something really works they're they're gonna regurgitate it about every every Chinese brand in the future. You'll see. Yeah, yeah. When uh, <laughs> when Biden like announced that they're you know floating the idea of banning, I'm like, okay, <laughs> are Democrats just like trying to speed run losing elections? Yeah. Like, I don't. <laughs> this, this is like a terrible <laughs> idea for you guys. I don't. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've gotten to the point where they're like, okay, uh, we have failed once again. We cannot govern. Uh, please, <laughs> please, a Republican take over for us and then do something evil for a little while. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then we can then we can swoop back in. Same play, guys. Again. Same play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's a little transparent at this point. Yeah. All right, so that's all I had for the uh, the important serious stuff. Um, but we've got a couple others that I was just curious about. So you make fun you make fun of so many different right wing and liberal groups and, and stuff. Which would be your favorite to dunk on? Do you have a your your favorite uh, <laughs> favorite scrub to to make fun of? Which one just keeps giving and giving yeah. content wise? I think for us it's probably the liberals, but uh, I, I'd have to say Lockheed. Or, or right-wing gorillas are up there as well. So who's your favorite to dunk on? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's such a eclectic range of targets. I, I feel like it's changed over time. Like, I think especially with Trump in office, I'm like, okay, I'm like, yeah. like just, you know, Republicans and all these, like, just everything having to do with the whole MAGA shit was, like, just yeah, easy yeah. pickings. And then once, like, Biden got elected, I'm like, all right, I feel like I can, <laughs> it's like open season, I can start dunking on liberals like, and yeah, Democrats. It's so easy. Yeah. It's awesome. and, yeah. And it's just like, so, there's so low, so, so much low hanging fruit, just like the shit they say, but then the shit they do goes totally against it. And it's like, all right. Um, so I guess it's changed with who's in the White House. Uh, and then, you know, of course, like all the corporate fucking oligarchs are always going to be a target. So, yeah, it's changed over time. But the liberal stuff just, like, gives a little lot more opportunity for, like, humor because it's just, like, mm-hmm. their, their message about, like, I mean, we've we've all seen the memes of, like, oh, like, they say these bombs were dropped by, like, a woman or a person yeah, of color. Yeah. And it's, like, <laughs> yeah. just the, like, insane like, identity politics and just, like, not actual material changes to our living standards. So, yeah, yeah. Lot, lots, of, lots of rich opportunity there. So I definitely gravitate in that direction as well. <laughs> And I think it's it's very useful uh, as well because a lot of people, you know, we've all had or grown up with, you know, all the talk show hosts and stuff dunking on Republicans and conservatives yeah. because, yeah, you know, they're they're comically evil. It's easy to do. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people in the United States uh, don't really hear much about why the other quote unquote other team, you know, the same team, but whatever, <laughs> um, are are also evil or at least very, very bad. So it's. I think it's useful to, to frame, to dunk on them as well, to show people like, hey, these are empty 
gestures. They're not actually making positive change. Like with the Black Lives Matter thing, they renamed a street and they got <laughs> dressed up in traditional African garb. That's going Crazy. to be looked back on as Love such that. a that ridiculous thing. Like, <laughs> so, this is like a South Park, Park episode. <laughs> yeah. I was like, look at the Americans. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just sitting in point. You know, Leonardo DiCaprio, like me, when he stands up in points. They Americans have it. They did it. <laughs> It's like, what a slap in the face. Like, come on, people. Like, look look what they're doing. They're not making any material changes. Your, your life is not going to meaningfully change. They're going to, to put up a sign and uh, move on and then fund the cops some more. And that's that's how the Democrats operate. They try to, to sell it to you with identity politics and, you know, pragmatism and all stuff like that. So I think making fun of that, pointing out where it's silly, dunking on them can actually be useful in, in helping to build class consciousness, get people a little bit more disenfranchised with the with the status quo. But yeah, uh, but yeah that's just me. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I wish it was more <laughs> normalized. Like it's it's almost yeah. like I can't. I feel like I can't make fun of liberals around like certain people without them assuming I'm like yeah, some yeah. just hardline uh-huh. Republican. So uh, I love how like uh, like inherently co- content creation is to an extent very sadistic because like you see like horrendous shit happening, right? Yeah. Or yeah. sometimes ridiculous shit happening, and you're like, oh my god, that's bad. But then you're also like, oh, fuck yeah, I can make content <laughs> about that. <laughs> and you're like, oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're, probably, you're reading the history books. And I'm guessing, uh, you know, James, this happens to you. And you're like, oh, my God, they really like mass murdered like 10,000 people in South America in a day because of Coca-Cola. Yeah. What the fuck? And, they, and, you know, and you feel disgusted and you're like, fuck yeah, you TikTok video <laughs> idea. Great and material. Like, I, I hate myself. <laughs> we we, we got to process the horrors somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, wow, they cut off people's hands for not making the rubber quota. Guess I got to go get a can of green paint and put it on my hand so I can chroma key it out. Yeah, start looking at prosthetics on Amazon. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. The life of a, of a degenerate content creator. <laughs> All right, well... Let's wrap it up, I guess, with uh, with some some more lighthearted stuff. So, who you know, I I think I see some some inspirations, some particular cinematic inspirations in your TikToks. So, who would you say are your favorites? What things do you draw inspiration from? Yeah, um, man. I think you. I'm going to interrupt you immediately. Yeah. I think you to me are a combination of uh, Guy Ritchie and Tarantino. But mm-hmm. uh, I guess definitely <laughs> that's Tarantino. just me. Yeah, the music, the <laughs> caca. The, 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 just everything the the way the characters look but okay that's just me sorry please yeah no i i think you pretty much hit the nail on the head like i i probably what you'd expect you know the the tarantino guy richie bong joon ho mm-hmm. scorsese nice. and you know all, all the guys that like either like have like the iconic like needle drop moments with the cuts to the yeah. music and then also like socially geared like plots and characters and you know and then just awesome like cinematography and all that stuff i try to like pluck everything i like from all those different directors and 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 creators and try to apply them to my own stuff um Mm. yeah so (laughs) you for sure fuck yeah thank you i'm glad i i got it because it's always like um I don't know who said the joke, but when it comes to Tarantino, Scorsese, Guy Ritchie, etc., etc., you know, if you walk in a room and in that room there is the worst human being you've ever met and the most brilliant human being you ever met, they will both like Tarantino movies. Yeah, I, <laughs> <You know? laughs> the most unsufferable people. I, yeah, I, for all the wrong reasons, and then some brilliant human beings for all the right reasons, like like their work. It's incredible. I know. It, I I almost hesitate to say Tarantino because I'm yeah. like, <laughs> right, right. It's like he's like one of those people. I'm like. Like, yeah, I love his work, like most of his work. And then like if I saw him in person, I just like avoid him. Like, I, yeah, because <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that description applies to him as well. Like he's brilliant and talented, but he's also like very, very fond of saying the N word and stuff like that. So, like he, yeah. he's uh, maybe not the greatest guy, but yeah. you know, his, his <laughs> very I, inspired work. Yeah, I really try to like stay away from the whole uh, glamorizing your, your, your heroes to an extent that I'm like, you yeah. know, I'll just uh, I'll stay away. <laughs> yeah, I can. I'll, I'll take his snap zooms and big yellow text. But other than that, he, <laughs> he can beat it. Um, all right. Well, with all the uh, the the shit posting out of the way, the dunking on libs, the Tarantino, the the tactical n words, um, I think we'll call it there for the day. So, uh, James, thank you again for coming on. This has been a blast. Uh, it's been really interesting for me personally to learn uh, for the first time what TikTok is. 
uh, how I can access it uh -huh. on my on my cellular phone um, that it connects <laughs> to my home Wi-Fi network. That was very fascinating. Um, so, James, uh, one more time, tell us uh, where we can find your work uh, and maybe what uh, what you've got in the works for us. Give us a little sneak peek. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can find me uh, as James Rewald, one word, on Twitter and YouTube, or J Rewald one five on TikTok and Instagram. Um, and yeah, I'll be I'll be working on some more videos. Um, hopefully, pumping them pumping them out soon. Um, and then yeah, I guess just like to kind of plug uh, some stuff that's going on that um, you can check out online. Um, you know, I'm a big supporter of like the national democracy uh movement in the philippines that you know seeks self-determination and national liberation of the filipino people free from imperialism feudalism bureaucrat capitalism um so if you they got a lot of different orgs that are in that like what you might call like nat dem or nd for short um but there's organizations like bayan anik bayan gabriela migrante so you know you can find their upcoming protests and actions on social media. Um, there's like two big campaigns that come to mind. Like one, there's plans to expand the U.S. military in the Philippines. Um, the U.S. already has access to five of the Philippines bases. They do all sorts of joint military exercises. And now they're trying to expand it to four new bases. Um, and they're going to have their biggest uh, sort of uh, joint training or balikitan as they call it. Um, to date. Um, so they're really trying to, you know, increase their presence in this sort of encircle strategy against China and, you know, maintain their their um, geopolitical dominance and protect multinational corporate interests. So all that fucked up shit's going on. Um, but uh, feel free to, you know, look up if there's any actions in your city. Um, and then the other, I guess, campaign is APEC, um, which is this sort of intergovernmental forum that up holds the neoliberal order of things and is basically just a way to set up unequal trade agreements between mm. global north and the global south and the pacific asia region um, again a way to sort of encircle um, and isolate china um, without you know actually any actual care about the working class in, in these countries um, so yeah and they um I think like Bayan or one of the ND orgs is organizing around that, as well as the International League of People's Struggle. They're like a anti-imperialist international organization with a whole bunch of different uh, member organizations. Um, but uh, yeah, feel free to check those out on their social medias. And then I guess the, the last quick thing to plug, um, me and some of the guys from Turn Leftist, the uh, podcast and meme page, uh, plan to la launch a a podcast that I'll be co-hosting. Um, so oh, nice. kind of, yeah, yeah. Still kind of working out the details. Um, but you know, if you follow my social or their socials, um, you'll, you'll find out more about it soon. Awesome. Hell yeah. Okay. Well, all of the, all of this will be linked in the description below. So if you want to, to follow James, check out his work, um, support some of these orgs that he's mentioned, some of these, um, actions that are, that are going on, uh, please do check out the links in the description and, uh, give them a look. All right. And, uh, one more thing we'd like to thank our, our very generous patrons without whom we could not do what we do. So thank you all. We love you very, very much. Mwah. This has been the deep program. I'm JT. I'm Ugopnik. And I'm James. And you can all go to our Patreon and give me more money so I can buy more cameras. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>